For most of us, the first thing we think of when considering our perception of the world around us is our sight. So any impairment of sight or damage to the eyes can be particularly traumatic. At the Bristol Eye Hospital in the southwest of England, researchers from the University of Bristol have made an exciting discovery that could have major impact on eye damage that results from retinal disease. Although the retina consists of neural tissue that is similar to the brain, it has always been understood that it does not contain progenitor cells, also known as stem cells, which could help to remodel the eye following retinal damage. Professor Andrew Dick, head of the university's academic unit of ophthalmology, has never accepted this view, and he and his research team have recently reported evidence of stem cells in the adult human retina. The excitement of our findings are that it completely changes the paradigm of treatment. The concept is now that, for example, if we take an inflammatory process, there's no question that we have to dampen down the inflammation first, so that's one aspect of research. But to remodel the tissue, we then have to think of new ways of generating tissue function. And this is where the stem cell, progenitor cell work comes into play. So we're left with understanding these cells and being able to switch them on again in order to generate new cells to generate function or maintain the function without losing more. Their research program is already able to grow stem cells from biopsies of human retina and they are now looking at the conditions required to turn them into nerve cells or photoreceptor cells. If they can understand that, then they are well on the way to controlling eye disease by helping the injured retina to restore itself. We've been able to grow neural progenitor or stem cells from adult tissue. These cells were previously thought to exist in developing or fetal embryonic tissue when new tissues and cells are being grown and laid down, but it wasn't thought that the, these cells that can form new nerve cells or light receptors could be grown or, or found in adult tissues. This is very interesting because it means that the adults have the ability to regenerate the cells and, and, and the tissues to a certain extent, and we've been able to grow these cells out of donor eyes from people aged um, well up into their late 80s. I hope that we will be able to establish a treatment for patients who are losing vision as a result of degeneration. I am still unclear as to how successful this research will be for patients who have lost a lot of vision, but if we catch disease early enough, uh, then we'll be able to prevent further visual loss by using such treatments. So in my working lifetime, uh, which is still a fair bit left, I hope, uh, I would hope to see this whole new avenue of treatment approach available. For some that have suffered certain sight impairments from birth, the research from Professor Dick and his team may not be of any help, but there's another innovative way to address one such problem. Neil Harbison is colorblind. In fact, he suffers from a rare condition called achromatopsia, which means that he has no perception of color and only sees in black, white, and shades of gray. But a new prosthesis, known as the eyeborg, has now given him a way to differentiate colors. Well, I was, I was in a lecture given by Adam Montandon in the Dartington College, and he was talking about cybernetics and cyborgs and how new technology can change the way we perceive the world. And when he finished, I went to him and I asked him if he thought it would be possible to create something so that I could perceive color in some way. And then he said, sure. And he, we began a project. What Adam created was the eyeborg, a means of transferring colors into a series of audible tones. How the eyeborg system works is it uses a small digital head-mounted camera that takes in all the color information directly in front of it and feeds it into a computer that you can wear in a backpack. It can be any normal laptop computer. And the laptop runs special software that slows down the light waves and turns them into sound waves. And those sound waves then come out of the headphones here. The eyeborg analyzes the light waves it receives and transposes these into sound waves. So red, which is a low color frequency, is heard as a low tone. Violet, at the other end of the spectrum, would sound as a high tone. This gives Neil his newfound perception of color, and Adam is confident that he can adapt his invention to help others. 
Well, the wider applications of the iBorg are almost limitless. It's not just for people with visual impairments. It could even be used for people with complete blindness. And also, a lot of musicians, a lot of artists, a lot of engineers are really interested in a project that combines visual and audio experience as one new perception. Everybody uses their eyes or their ears in their day-to-day -day job, and this can really help bring a closer connection between the two.